Good morning and a special welcome to everyone that has taken time out of their busy schedule to go on this virtual tour with Laley and High Tech Dairy Supply at Wessendorf Dairy Farms. First thing we want to cover is the second slide, Carrie, that please make sure that if you can mute your phone, also your computer, and turn your camera off so that there's no back feed or no interruptions that would help out. Then also, if you could, remember, we are going to have a question and answer period at the end of this virtual tour. You can either hit the chat button to the right on your computer and type in a question and send it, or you can keep it until the end when we have our question and answer period. My name is Gordon Gasper and I work for High Tech Dairy Supply. And this has been a unique year to say the least with the COVID pandemic and also the safety restrictions on virtual tours and open houses. We thought this virtual tour, tour would be one of the safest ways to tour Mooville Dairy. So on behalf of Lely, High Tech Dairy Supply, Premium Farm Solutions, and Pringers Inc., we say, Thank you for joining us today. Next slide, Carrie. What we want to do next is talk about the agenda for today. We're going to start right out with a quick tour as far as for a video by Westendorp Farm, where the farm crops go right from there all the way to ice cream and other milk products produced by Mooville Creamery. And then we're going to have a discussion and a virtual tour with Troy Westendorf, where we're going to cover some of the history of Mooville and Westvale View Dairy Farm, Mooville Creamery. And then we're also going to talk about their facility, the layout of it, and why they did what they did and the reasons behind it, and why they went with Laley A4 Robots. And we'll also get an update on the Mooville Creamery and their locations. And then we'll talk a little bit about their next adventure as far as further upgrade from A4 robots replaced out with the A5 robot and stuff. We're going to talk a little bit by why they switched their goal for it. And then also as far as for the time frame that it took to take the A4s out and put the A5s in. Then we're going to slip on over to Kevin Halstich our lead man for TSS in a robot room where he's going to show the upgrades of the A5 versus the A4. And then he's going to talk to Carlisle Wessendorp about the daily maintenance procedures and then also the time frame that it takes to do that. And then from there, we're going to jump right up to the barn office where Max Dunnebeck, the head FMS man, is going to go over the T4C. So in other words, he wants to look at all the records there and the management details that they have. And Carlisle Wessendorf is going to join him, join him so that they can go over stuff as far as for breeding community, as far as for um, milk quality, somatic cell count, and herd health. Then we're going to slip out to our open panel as far as for question and answering. And the people on that panel for answering all the questions will be Carlisle Wessendorp, Troy Wessendorp from Mooville Dairy and Creamery. And then we got Chad Skolma, the president and owner of High Tech. And we have Kevin Hulstage, the TSS lead man, and Max Donovan, the lead man for FMS, and myself, Gordon Gasper. And a reminder, after the virtual tour, that is when we're going to select the winner for the Laley Cooler package from the uh, required the attendees that registered today, and then also some other Laley packages. And those will all be brought out to you from the Laley centers, and they'll notify you of your winnings. So with that, at this time, we'd like to go to the next slide and say thank you very much. And if you have any questions, contact Max or myself. But we're going to jump right into the little virtual tour at Mooville Dairy Farms. Sit back, relax, and we're going to hit the short video right now. Thank you.
We're here at Wessendorf's Family Farm, where Mooville Creamery and also Westvale View Dairy Farm originated from and stuff. And we're real lucky today because we have got the main man here, Troy Wessendorf, talking to us about the past. Sometimes you have to go to the past to actually be appreciative of all the work that you put in and to see how much it's grown over the years. And on behalf of Laley, High Tech Dairy Supply, and all the other Laley Centers, thank you very much, Troy, for taking from work to an answer some questions on just how things went when you decided to get robots in and also a little bit of history on the farm and the creamery. I'd like to start out right away with Troy. Got a first question for you. I remember your mom and dad actually getting married in 1983 and I went to the wedding and then all of a sudden I hear they moved over to a farm in 1991. How old were you in 1991 when you moved over here? Yeah, so I was three years old when my parents moved over here. Um, when they moved here in 91, they had six kids under the age of six. And that happened by, I have an older brother, uh, I'm a twin, and there's triplets below me. So it goes, it goes one, two, three, right in order. So a little different. <laughs> and that's pretty good. Doug and Louisa were already showing efficiencies back then. <laughs> three trips to the hospitals right. and two kids per trip. That's right. Yeah. Average, yeah. How many cows did they start milking with and what size was the parlor? When they moved over here in 91, they brought 50 cows with them. Um, the parlor, I think it was a double six when they started. So not, nothing too big, but you know, the whole base was here and the farm had sat empty uh, for about two years before they moved here, so. Oh, wow, yeah. No, I can remember coming over here and seeing that surge parlor mm -hmm. and everything like that yeah. and stuff. Um, then the next thing that the farm kind of got into after they got to milking cows, and raising all the kids to be good later on in life. Were they thinking about putting in a creamery? Yeah, so we started, my parents started thinking of that uh, early 2000s. Um, they spent a few years visiting other creameries around, around the United States. Uh, I think they visited over 15 states looking at other creameries and uh, they broke ground in 2004 in the fall and uh, the creamery was opened in uh, Memorial Day weekend in 2005. So. Wow. Um, we were milking 90 cows then when we opened the creamery. We had uh, upgraded from 50 up to 90, and uh, that's what we started the, when we started the creamery. That's how many cows we were milking. So. Uh, now, that was all registered cows, too, right? Right, yep. At that we're, time? Yeah. Yep, all registered. We were milking three times in the parlor back then. So Three times in the parlor. Yep, a double okay. eight. We had upgraded to a double eight. So, <laughs> so when, after the creamery opened up, how many years was it before you guys started thinking about robots? and touring robots. Yeah, so five years after 2010, we started uh, running out of fluid milk for the creamery. Um, so we knew it was kind of time to expand, and uh, yeah, at first we weren't really looking at robots, but we visited the first farm, and after we saw the first first robots, it was pretty pretty easy decision for us, we felt like. So uh, we spent the next year, year and a half, two years, uh, visiting other uh, robot farms, and uh, we broke ground on this barn here in the spring of 2012. And uh, we were milking in the fall of 2012. So I think from the date we first moved dirt to uh, when we were milking cows was only about five months. So pretty, mm -hmm. pretty quick process. Good, good. And if I remember right, the construction crews were happy because they had so much labor force available. You guys put a lot of time in helping put in underground in-floor heating, yep. and that helped the construction guys get their project done right. faster and right. stuff like that. And we chipped in when we could. Yeah, so it went good and stuff like that. I still remember as far as for, and you guys probably remember, the Saturday I think it was that we went down to Norbert Dairy yep. and looked at their robots, and I actually bought lunch that day. I know it's hard to believe, but I walked up to the cash register lady, and she looked at me and she says, Oh, she says, you must be having a great day today. And I said, what do you mean? She says, well, you got your kids and all your grandkids here today. 
And I thought you guys were going to drop on the floor laughing. <laughs> and they called me Gramps for quite a few days after that. Could be years after that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, but no. The nice thing is with the robots and stuff, you guys also added some Luna towel brushes. Also the Juno, Juno. pushing up the feed. And a lot of it has to do with all the time that we looked at drawings and prints so that we could come up with the barn that you wanted, that you thought would be efficient for you. Like to go through the drawings and some of the dimensions on your barn and stuff because that may raise some questions from people going through on this virtual tour. Uh, the first thing is your freestall barn and the whole complex ended up being 119 foot wide, the main freestall barn with a east-west presentation. And the nice thing is you're 244 foot long. Um, you have got some space on each end of the freestall barn for stuff that we can talk about here very shortly. I'll ask you questions about. You have got a very nice six row freestall barn with the outside freestalls on it um, which is great because then that way you've got more room for the cows for lunging space um, your outside area there the freestall is nine foot wide the first scrape alley alongside that is 11 foot wide and then your head to head is 16 foot from face to curb to face to curb and you have 14 foot if I remember right, from the face of the curb to the feed alley wall, and then your feed alley itself is 19 foot and stuff. So you got plenty of room there and stuff. Um, your whole setup is set up with a head to head where the cows come in facing each other when they're going through the robot system. And one of the reasons, if I remember right, was that you guys wanted this was because then you could have a controlled foot bath. And on the drawing, you can see right in the middle, in that 32 foot wide area, has got your foot baths. That way the cows have got a great on deck area watching the robots to see if there's an opening, which I think is a great idea. And then they can go with the Luna brushes or a drink of water, whatever they want to do. And then on the north side, you have 114 stalls. And that is side is the side of your cow care area. South side is where your milk house is. And you've got 111 stalls. The feed bunk space that you have, which is very important for these cows, ended up being just under 220 foot per side. Then as we jump over to the milk house side, you can take a look here. The width of that addition was 68 foot wide, 52 foot long. Each robot room, to give you an idea of the robot rooms, 12 foot wide. And the long one for the viewing area was 42 foot long. And the fetch pens on each side averaged about 100 square feet. And they have a little utility room, as you can see, right next to the robot room where the central unit sits. And then your viewing area, which is a big viewing area, actually like 14 foot by 38, 40 feet with a lot of nice windows. But then your milk house. Your milk house right there on the west side of that is actually 14 foot by 34 foot long with the two milk tanks in that room. Your utility room was set up so that you could come through the wall with electrical, plumbing, and drains. And to the CRS unit, which is kind of the brains of everything with the robot, you come in from the back wall, through the wall, to the units so that you didn't have to clean around them in the milk house, which I thought was a great idea. Um, and then we'll jump over to the cow care side. That side was 68 foot wide by 42 foot long. And as you can see, head to head again, 
but the cows that you wanted sorted would turn right or left down a three foot alley into a bedding pack pen. And off that bedding pack pen, right there to the east side, you see a nice head chute there. And right alongside the head chute on the right hand side, you see the vet room. And then again, another little utility room right where the central unit is so that you can put chemicals in there and miscellaneous stuff. But then the best thing is too, up above those robot rooms, you've got your office. Your office ended up being 11 foot wide by 42 foot long. And you've got an outcropping up there also, which is a nice viewing area where you have your desk and you can watch the cows where you guys have your meetings talk about different things, watch a couple games or something. Appreciate your time letting us go through all those dimensions of the barn and everything, but I want to start asking some questions. Your manure, that was one of the first decisions, how you're going to handle the manure. Can you tell a little bit about how your manure handling is set up here? Yeah, so building the new barn we knew we wanted to put automatic scrapers in right away, so um, yeah, we decided to go with uh, automatic scrapers, they run every three hours, and then we have a, uh, a pump room where it pushes all the manure into a, a single room, and we have a 600 feet, uh, it pumps at 600 feet from our pump room to our existing lagoon. So, so that's a piston pump. Right, piston pump. Okay, all right. Yep, and that's worked out pretty well. And that's gone all the way over to your old manure pit right. on the other side. Right, we didn't, we didn't expand the manure pit, we, it just pumped right into our existing pit. So. Okay, good. Good. That was nice that we didn't have, we have to empty it twice as often, but it was nice that we didn't have to expand the pits, so. Yeah, and then when, if I remember right, we were talking about free stalls. You've got bigger free stalls on one side than you do the other side? Right, so the barn's kind of divided in half. We have two robots on one side, two on the other. Uh, basically the only uh, difference is the stalls are four inches bigger for our mature cows. So gotcha. we have all the mature cows on one side and two-year-olds and then some smaller three-year-olds on the other side. So okay. good, good. With a center feed alley. Okay. Um, also on the back side, your cow care area and stuff like that, you've got a nice pen there to catch cows. Yep. Do you do anything special back there? Do you have a place for medicine or a chute or anything like that? So the vet room and the chute and the, uh, our special needs area are all connected in the same, same area. So we don't have to walk very far to get semen or get medicine for cows. Everything's centrally, lo centrally located. Um, and we can also sort cows on the ro two robots on that side. We can uh, basically put in the computer to route a cow and it's anytime she comes on the robot at all it'll automatically route her to that back chute. So we don't have to sort them or anything. The cows are back there waiting for us. So you can actually sort some cows even before you come in the barn? Right, right. Okay, all right. Yep, and now with the A5s, you can even set a designated time to sort them. So if you leave that night and don't want them sorted till uh, middle of the night, they'll, they'll wait to, to sort them. Good, good. And then from your cow care area, you've got an eight foot wide cow lane. That goes right down to the transition barn and stuff. Um, and you added on to that transition barn. How many years was it after you built your parlor, or I mean your robotic facility up here? Was that pretty soon after that? Uh, we waited a couple years, but we, we needed more room for the dry cows and for the okay. calving area. So uh, we, did the, we, we redid that a few years after and basically doubled the size of the dry cow barn and uh, add it on to our calving pen to make that a lot bigger too. So Very, very good. We very were good. short on room basically. Yeah. How many times did you hook up a truck and trailer to haul up the fresh cows up to the robot room? Uh, never. No, nope. we've got a lane there that they can just walk up right from the calving pen. So right you got a drover's there. lane and then also on the end of the barn, you've got the west end of the barn set up that you have got a small drover's lane there too bringing cows from pen to pen. Right, right. Stuff. It makes it okay. easy to put dry cows in the transition area and transition cows into the calving pen. So. Can you see a benefit as far as for that, as far as for the cows? Just Keep less stress. Yeah, just less stress on them. The, 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 okay. the less you have to move them and yeah. um, just an easier transition basically. And saved you guys a lot of time and labor. Right. Hooking and unhooking. Right. Okay. Um, and then right next to your transition barn, you guys remodeled the old freestall barn. And now that's for heifers? Right, breeding age heifers are in the old uh, milk cow barn that we had bef 
that we were milking cows in before we put this barn in. So we put brand new headlocks in, uh, we redid all the stalls for breeding age size and uh, that's worked out really, really well too. Mm. How do you keep track for breeding there? Yeah, so we use the same collar that the robots use for breeding. So uh, breeding age heifers get the collar and we have a long range reader. So our, our main computer that records all the uh, robot data, it also catches all the heats for our breeding age heifers. So everything's on one single list. Nice, yep. nice, good, good. And then coming back up towards the barn and stuff, you can't help but see the milk line. That actually goes underneath the driveway right? and heads down to the creamery. Yep, yep. So we send milk down uh, three times a week. We usually have a little bit of a buffer, but most of the time we're uh, almost 100% of the milk goes down to the down to the creamery each each week. So okay. good, good. Now at the creamery, you guys are actually supplying a lot of stores and a lot of restaurants. Do you have a number, rough number, that you take care of? Yes, we have four of our own stores, and then okay. we're uh, delivering to about 200 wholesale accounts as well, all on our own delivery trucks. So uh, there's three trucks that go go out every day and cover pretty close to. Uh, the lower half of Michigan from one side to the other. Good, good. Yep. Now, where are your creamery shops? Because you started one up north of here? Right. So this is still the main hub here in Nashville. Okay. Um, in 2017, we built our second store 30 miles north of here in Ionia. Okay. Uh, we called it the Utter Store. And then in 2019, uh, we added a third store in Zeeland, which is towards Grand Rapids, uh, a little over an hour away from this main hub. And then uh, we just announced two weeks ago that we are adding a fourth store in Eaton Rapids, which is about 30 minutes to the, to the southeast of us. So that'll be a new venture next year, and we're really excited about it. Oh, good, yep. good. And the thing is, you're kind of in the center, right. supplying all those stores. Right. It's just the main, main home base here. So that's good, that's good. Well, is there anything that you might have changed as far as for during the construction aspect or anything like that? Is there anything that you would say to people, um, go see more places, or what would you suggest if people were interested in putting in robots? Yeah, tour as much as you can. Um, okay. Yeah, like we said before, we tried to visit as many robot farms as we can, and we did a pretty good job, but our goal was to gain at least one good idea from each robot farm that we visited. So yeah. the more robot barns that you can see, the more ideas you're going to get from each and, each and every one of them. And, and ask questions, you know, see what they like about their design and their barn and what they don't like and what they change, and hopefully, uh, you know, you can make your barn set up as efficient as possible. For you and your family. Right. Yeah. Right. Well. I've known the Westendorf family for a long time and um, it's been a great time with them and I really appreciate their straightforwardness on everything and also they like to make things precise and workflow and save work labor and stuff. So on behalf of High Tech Dairy Supply, thank you very much, Troy, Thanks for, having for your time. We're going to go over to Kevin now. Kevin is going to talk about the new A5 because Wessendorf's just upgraded from the A4s to the A5s because they were looking at equipment that was more energy efficient for them, a faster speed of attachment, and also the efficiency of the machine itself in different parts. And one nice thing was they wanted to be able to make sure that they could do this construction of doing the demolition, doing the addition, putting the robots in, and keeping it so that they did not lose any milk production during this whole process. And they were real lucky as far as for they ended up doing the whole process in three weeks from start to finish. And there was no delay in the milk production. And it's great that they continued to be in our Laley family that we can help them out as far as for servicing and doing everything with the robots. We really appreciate the family, the way they've been very forthright on everything with us with the equipment the service and the maintenance and with that i'm going to turn it over to mr kevin for phase two of the virtual tour at wessendorf dairy farms hi i'm kevin halstig i'm uh, the product specialist for high-tech dairy supply 
Uh, I've been working for high tech for just about nine years now and uh, I've been tasked with introducing the A5 robot. Lately, as a company always strives to improve and never settle, so they came out with the A5 robot. Um, the A5 robot has uh, improved screen, improved melt pump, uh, improved the arm, the arm function, um, and just made the machine uh, more efficient with more processing power and giving us more things that we can do with this robot although it looks a lot like the old robot it is a it is a completely improved machine that they spent a lot of years testing and ver validating the the parts of the robot to make them better part of the improvements for the A5 robot is they redesigned the screen to be more user friendly obviously you can see how much milk has been produced, how the quarters are coming. There's also a button for cow info so you have more, more cow info readily at your uh, fingertips and you can look at some of those data points that the robot provides and where that cow is in her lactation. Some of the other improvements are are the Smetic cell counter, which is really not an improvement, but been added as a feature in the last few years to the Lely's arsenal of things that can be added to a robot to improve data points for the farm. One of the improvements Lely has made to the A5 robot was actually a change. These went back to the centrifugal pump from the bladder pump that was in the A4 robots, which is a reduction in maintenance cost from the bladder pump. One of the other upgrades lately made to the A5 robot is the zero gravity arm. It uses less air and is much quieter to keep the cows more calm during the milking. The new lasers also scan from the top down instead of from the bottom up, which makes a more accurate and efficient connection. Troy told me earlier today that they have had three failures in the last three days, which is an improvement over most farms. Part of the processing power that the A5 robot has, the robot now scans after each milking before post dip to get a more accurate coverage of the teats with the post dip.
I'm here with Carlisle, the oldest uh, son of Doug and Louisa, and uh, he's going to quick, briefly go over uh, daily maintenance with uh, with you. So the, on the new ones, the biggest thing is on the screen, all you do is go to the daily clean and hit start and it automatically moves the arm to the spot and releases the robes. So you can do your wash up, check the robes, check the chains, check bleed holes and hoses and uh, just wash everything up uh, once a day. It usually takes 15 minutes in the morning and then just do a check over at night before you head in and uh, pretty simple. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Max Dunnebeck with High Tech Dairy Supply. Uh, I am the farm management support. Uh, with me today is Carlisle Westendorp. To kind of wrap up this virtual tour, we are going to go over t for c the computer, um, touch base a little bit on reproduction, um, and wrap things up for you guys. What we'd like to point out, um, kind of one of our favorite features about this office, uh, it really gives you a bird's eye view. You can see out into the entire barn of all the lactating animals as well as right behind you, you have a bird's eye view of the, the hospital pen. Um, so when you're up here entering information or working on the computer, you can keep an eye on everything, monitor cows, um, watch for heats, etc. It's a really nice view um, to be able to look over your entire herd. Going into t for c a little bit, um, this is the, the main home screen, which we call the dashboard. Um, you have all of your KPIs here, which you get a list to select from. Uh, basically total production of milk, fat and protein, milk per cow, um, all the way down to free time and connection attempts. Um, if we want, we have the ability then to sort. Um, by clicking on this KPI, we can sort by location or as well as by group to break it down by individual pens. Um, it's a really nice, really easy to follow, um, kind of user-friendly dashboard. On the left here, we have the ability to favorite all the reports that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, makes them really easy to find, so you can come in and, and jump right to whether it be your health reports or your milk separation list, utter attention list, anything that you feel needs to be favorited can be added to this list as well. Moving down the tabs, we have the data entry tab. Um, this is where you're going to spend the majority of your time entering data into T4C. Um, we enter all of our heats, preg checks, inseminations, dry offs, um, as well as all your routing tasks or uh, your health treatment tasks, telling you which animals need to be touched throughout the day. Um, again, very simple, straightforward. Um, on the right side, you're going to have all your animals and young stock um, listed in the herd. So if you need to find an animal, you can easily search her and move on down the tab. Um, in the settings tab, this is kind of where a lot of the fine tuning comes from. We, we set your, your age insemination, voluntary waiting period for your repro, as well as the milking and feeding tabs where we'll set up the milk access table to allow animals access to the robot to be milked, as well as where we'll program your feed tables um, to, to give the, the animals a treat in the robot when they're milking via the pellet or the concentrate. Um, as well as all routing tasks and advanced filters. If you have the availability to set up routing tasks on your robots and have animals be sorted out, we can import, we can customize, or we can build routing tasks to accommodate your needs from there so that all animals are standing in a pen and you don't have to go out to the um, actual pen of the animals and find them. The next tab is just going to be your, your reports. Um, there's three sections in here. We have the favorites on the left, the defaults which come pre-programmed into T4C when you buy the robots and the software, as well as all reports. All reports um, is going to be anything that you have customized and built yourself. We have the availability to import and export from a USB or someone else's T4C, um, as well as we can um, set up automatic printing and um, automatic printing tasks. So if you show up in the morning and you want your your repro list or your two breed list to be printed waiting for you, um, we can easily get that done as well. Um, we can pretty much build a report for almost anything uh, the producer requires in T4C. Um, we can get pretty complex. We can also build graphs, 
um, in spreadsheets as well, and then also export them to an Excel file, PDF, etc. The last module in T4C that we'll talk about um, is the reproduction module. Uh, Carlisle will go a little bit more into the, the reproduction of the actual herd, but what this does is this is where it tracks um, calving interval, days in milk, um, age to first calving, etc. Um, it's kind of a snapshot and then we can compare the last 30 days to the last quarter to the last year so you can constantly tell whether the herd is improving hopefully um, or moving in the right direction. Carlisle, you want to go over a little bit of your repro program, what you guys have seen since installing T4C in the collars. I know you've collared heifers as well and been pretty happy with that. Yeah, for the cows, we uh, do everything for the first breeding is pre-sync ob sync or double ob sync on the older cows. And then the activity picks up anything if we miss, if, we, if a cow is open usually before we even preg check them. We have the vet come every other week and I bet 90% of the cows that are that came back open we caught with the activity tags before we actually got to vet check. The heifers as well, we loot once a week and they get picked up on activity as well with the LD tags which is probably a couple hundred feet away the barn is. It still picks them up. So Pretty happy though with the, the success rate and the, yeah, the reading. It's, it's very accurate, it shows you a percent uh, how, how much it thinks it's in heat and you can go and check the cow before you breed her and it also shows you a timing of how long she's been in heat so you know your best when your best conception is to get her pregnant. Lastly I just wanted to show you guys just what a cow card looks like if we just pull up an animal here um, on T for C. You're going to have all the information across the top as far as her lactation days, lactation number, etc. Um, but then we can pull all the way from milk visits, a daily overview um, to all her health events, to a calendar of her entire lactation where we can go through and see anything that has ever happened to that animal. Um, as well as an activity graph um, to watch her, her activity for breeding as well as um, uh, milk quality here on the left, which that's fantastic, as well as an animal feeding um, throughout her lactation. So there's really uh, very little that we can't track or monitor on a, a per cow basis or on a entire herd basis in T4C. Um, T4C is continuously updating and improving. Um, we are working better and more and more with Dairy Comp as well as PC Dart. Um, I know you guys used PC Dart as well for the, the registry side of things. Um, the two programs do work very well together as well. We touched a little bit uh, in Kevin's past segment on the MQCC2, which is the somatic cell counter. You guys installed those with the A5s when we first put them in. Are you relatively happy with them? Yeah. Um, been... Does it provide actual data that's factual and real? Yep, it's the same as what we send on the tank and it tells us our problem cows we can go treat them or check on them and that kind of stuff it's been low maintenance and works works well good good so basically we install the mqcc2s on the robot we turn on a module in t4c we have to prime the reagent and then everything from there is pretty much a, a seamless process um, the way the mqccs work is in report 16 which is your herd overview um, you are going to get an average cell count for the herd um, that's going to be obviously a breakdown of the last 24 hours so um, T for C starts over at midnight, so from 12.01 to midnight is going to be the, the past day, um, and you will get your average cell count of the herd. But then the other nice feature, it works with the, the Utter Health Attention Work List, which is a nice way to come in and, and check your problem cows. Now the nice feature about this, what it does, is it tells you each cow's somatic cell indication but then it also will tell you um, the impact of the, the cell count on the herd. So basically what that cow contributes to the total cell count of the herd. So if you have a cow that's 10, 12% of your total herd somatic cell, you know right away she's got to go. Um, and then also it will tell you on here on the far right column, 
um, the attention count, which is how many times that animal's been on this attention list. So you know if she's a repeat offender, repeat offender, if she's chronic, subclinical, etc. So you can find those cows quickly, treat them, and, and hopefully get them back to normality in the herd. Well, that concludes our virtual tour part of the history of the farm. Not only the Western Vale family farm, but also the creamery, and then also switching over A4 robots to A5s. And then Max took over on the FMS, and then we had Kevin in there on the TSS, and thank you very much to Carlisle and Troy for all their comments and able to spend some time with us. And we just want to let everybody know that your dairy is our priority. We want to work with you. We want to grow with you. And if you have problems, we want to be there to help you servicing it and taking care of it for the future. Max? We want to thank everyone for tuning into the virtual tour as well. Um, we appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to join us um, to go over a few things. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, we actually will jump into a live Q&A session right now, currently with the entire Westendorp family. They will be joining us to answer any questions that you may have for us, um, as well as any questions for them. If you have any questions in the future or want to look at any more of Laley's automated solutions, feel free to reach out to Gord or myself. Uh, we are very passionate about this. Laley is a, a very good company uh, to invest your future in. They're constantly, as Kevin mentioned before, always improving and looking for ways to provide dairymen with the best automated solutions to tailor to their individual dairy's needs. Thank you. And your vet room. Do you have anything special besides the vet room, that chute and that pen that you guys built here? And right next to the chute. You're questioning me or asking me? Question you. <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that one. <laughs> Remember that little drop chute? Okay. For treating cows? Yeah. And stuff like that? Do you want to start that part over? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll start I, that I didn't over. know where you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I got my battery light showing. Yep. Okay. Almost dead though. <laughs> Better make this fast, huh? <laughs> we can share, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want me to talk about? That? Does that work? <laughs> I was going to say. Well, that concludes our talking to. The past, whoa, could we start over? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
sit there waiting for the brushes and the waters are in the same spot. So we'd make their crossovers a little bit bigger. Um, we'd move the robots closer to the, to the alleys. They've kind of got a platform where they have to step up to, and it sits about three feet off the alley. And we, we don't really see the need for them to sit that far back. It just creates more of a hand scraping area for us to do every day. Um, you know, other than that, I don't think we change a lot. We get really good visits. We like the way the robots are set up in the barn. Um, we wish we had a treatment or shoot area on both sides of the barn, um, but because we had to put a uh, visitor's room where we could have uh, have tourists coming through and see the robots, it wasn't really feasible to set it up on the on the one side of the barn with the mature cows. So um, it is a bit of a pain to move them all the way across the barn to get them in a in a headlot or in a in a chute, but we don't have to do it all that often. But that'd probably be the biggest changes that we would make. Okay, another one for you, Troy. Sorry to just ask you all of them. <laughs> um, but what, it was asked, what can help ensure minimal after hour calls and alarms on the robots? So what could you do on your end to help make those numbers less? Yep, yep. We have seen our calls drop off by a lot since we, since we uh, upgraded the A5s, but when we were on the A4s really, you know, there there are maintenance things that you have to keep up on. You can't just let them go and wait for the problem to arise to fix it. You have to you have to do a lot of preventative maintenance so it doesn't. You know, if it do, if a rope breaks in the middle of the night, um, you know, you probably should have checked them at least a few days before and changed them out so that you don't get those calls in the middle of the night. Um, I mean, other than that, the more you know about the robots, the better off you'll be. Um, especially for the first few years after we put the A4s in, when Kevin came to do maintenance, you know, we we like to be there with him to learn and try to see and figure out how everything works. And the more you know about it, the more you can you can see if things are going wrong and be able to uh, fix a problem before it arises. Okay, I got another one. Um, would you recommend putting the somatic cell counters on the robots and are they worth the money? Yes, yeah, so we've had them now for about six months. Um, you know, we're not having um, North Star come and do our testing um, now that we have the somatic cell testers, but they, you know, they're not they're not free, but they are another tool that you can use. Um, you know, it does have a connectivity sensor, so it will catch mastitis cows using the connectivity sensors as well without the somatic cell, but. Uh, I think they pro the somatic cell probably catches a, a little bit earlier than the connectivity would. Um, but yeah, it's just another tool, and I guess you have to justify that money for your own budget to make it work. But um, we were able to save some money by not having to have somebody uh, come out, hook up a tester, and, and pull samples every other month. Um, so it was a there was a long term payoff for us to put those in as well. Looks like we have another one that came in. Uh, what types of support can a farm expect after robots are installed? Basically, when we sell a robot project, um, the way it goes is um, before the, the actual installation, um, Gord, who does construction management, will work with the farm on the design of the project, as well as some of the setting up of the, the drains, um, running milk line, et cetera. We'll work with Kevin on the design of the robot room and how we're gonna tie everything in. Um, from the farm management side, for myself, um, we start getting cows ready for the robots, start going through the herd. Do we have any three quarters cows, high somatic cell cows, putting collars on, et cetera. Um, once startup day has arrived and um, we have commissioned the robots, uh, we will pre-train if necessary or possible, which involves running cows through the robot before the actual startup day. Uh, we can have the robots uh, feed the cows as well as the arm will move without touching the animal. So it's kind of a nice feature to allow the cow to get a little bit of comfortable and understand that there's pellets um, in the feed bowl. Then once startup day comes, um, it's kind of all hands on deck. Uh, myself, as well as a, a startup crew, show up to actually train and scan cows for you. 
Kevin's on hand along with usually someone from Laley working on the technical side, as well as making sure the robots are functioning properly. We're getting milk to the tank and everything's working up to par. Um, that's usually a three to four day process before we kind of start letting the cows be cows and pulling gates from the barn um, and working off the fetch list. At that point in time, we've, we've gone through the robots and made sure everything's functioning properly. Um, and we really start turning it over to you guys by the weekend. From there, um, it's up to each individual farm on a per level basis on how they want to handle um, the TSS, uh, the maintenance. We are glad to work with each individual farm and if they want to do most of the maintenances themselves or most of the repairs, that's okay by us. We do have a scheduled A, B and C and D maintenance that we are required by Laley to come out and do as well. Um, but outside of that, we're, we're willing to work with you on a per level basis on what you would like to do. Um, throughout the first year, uh, the FMS side of things, we wanna make sure the robots are functioning properly. Um, production per cow is where you want it to be or required it to be. And just kind of tailoring to some of those fine tuning um, KPIs. Ultimately, we want you to be satisfied with the purchase, and um, we're here and willing to work with you and help you out in any way we can. Did I miss anything, Kevin, Gord, Chad? No, you summed it up pretty good, Max. Um, basically, in an overview, uh, with the purchase of the robots, we include the startup of the of the robot in the startup period, and then uh, include one year of FMS work. Um, of farm management support and then on the on the technical side on the service side of things uh, six months of warranty labor and then whatever parts labor we follow the Laley guideline on that so kind of piggyback a little bit what Max and Troy was, were saying about about maintenance and you know after hours calls I I, I really like what Troy said about being on site when we are, when we're fixing stuff and seeing how the robot works. The robots are, they're robots, but they're still fair, a fairly simple machine that, you know, milks a cow. And there are a lot of things that can be fixed uh, from, a, from a farmer standpoint and maintained. And, you know, we are well and willing to, to have parts on the farm that a farmer can maintain the robots you know, to a certain point with us, without us being there with our help over the phone. So I think maintenance cost and, and preparation has a lot to do with the farmer's willingness to to learn and, and accept, hey, this is just a different way of milking a cow like it's been milked for, for, for a lot of years. So I, I think that's, to me, is, is the biggest thing that, that Troy is in the Westendorp family are really good at is wanting to know how it works and being hands on and fixing stuff that that can be fixed by by the farmer and and tearing into things and you know you know not that we're not willing to come out and do it but from a cost standpoint I think they do an excellent job of of being out there and knowing what's going on so next time they can fix it and save themselves money and save themselves an after hours call and also save themselves a nighttime call. I mean, that's, you know, when you talk to Troy, you hear more about what, how many calls did I get versus how many times we came out and worked on it. They would rather not get calls at night too. And I think they, the Western Art family do an excellent job of ownership of robots and, and really maintaining them well and keeping their, their name on them. Thank you, Kevin. Um, sorry for some of the technical difficulties we had, but doggone it, it went real good. We wanna thank Wessendorf, Mooville, Dairy and Creamy for their time that they spent. We wanna check in one more time if you have any other questions, always feel free to give us a call, Max, myself, Chad, Kevin, always feel free to give us a call and stuff. So after that, thank you very much for joining us for the virtual tour. And on behalf of Laley, High Tech Dairy Supply, Premium Farm Solutions and Pringers, 
Have a great week. Thank you and be safe. Thank you, everyone.